In this video, we're going to be looking at how to work out the inverse binomial. So I've got a question over here, and it covers both of the different types of inverse binomial question that I can have. So one of them, they tell me the probability of something happening. And the first one, they say, find the probability of a single red card if the number of cards is 20. And the other one is find the, the number of cards if the probability of a red card is 0 0.4. So that's where we're heading to. But the first thing is I need to talk about one of these situations. And it's the same as when we're doing the inverse Poisson. I can only answer two types of questions in uh, an inverse binomial inverse Poisson. I can only solve it if x equals zero or if the probability of x is greater and equal to one. Okay, every other type of question can't be solved using these techniques. So you've just got to be aware of that when we start. Okay, now I have seen in one year, they told you the probability of one, the probability of two, and the probability of three or more. So therefore, you had to add those together to get the probability of one or more. But that's really not that bad. Now, the reason why you need to have it in these two forms is because if I know the probability of one or more, then I can work out by going one minus the probability of one or more gives me the probability of none. So I can convert my probability of one or more into my probability of none. Okay, so the probability of x equals zero is equal to one minus the probability of x being greater or equal to one. Okay, and therefore I can turn my probability of zero into one. Now I have also on here got my formula for the binomial which I've just taken from the formula sheet now those of you who've seen a few of my videos you'll understand that I hate the fact that it uses pi as my probability but we're just going to work with the probability that x equals zero for a minute so this first bit the n choose zero well We'll talk about that in a minute. This is my probability of success to the power of zero. And this is my probability of failure to the power of n. Now, if I look at that formula for a second, this bit, doesn't matter how many I have, could have 50,000. If I choose none of them, then that can only happen one way. And then the second part of my formula is the probability of success to the power of zero. Well, anything from remembering our stuff at year 11, anything to the power of zero is one. So actually, my probability equation for x equals zero is just one minus my probability of success to the power of the number of trials. And that's how I can solve these problems. So we're going to work through and solve these problems, and we're going to do it on the calculator so you can see how I get my answers. So the first one, I've been told the probability of x being greater than or equal to 1 is 0 0.9. So therefore, the probability of x equals 0 is 1 minus 0 0.9, which is 0 0.1. And I had to work that out for both of my situations. So in my first situation, I want to find the probability of a red card if the number of cards is 20. So I know that 0 0.1 is equal to 1 minus the probability of a red card to the power of 20. Okay? Now, if I have to undo a power, because I know what the power number is, I'm going to use my square root button, but not my square root button, because that only does 
power too. So I'm going to use the button beside that, which is the 20th root. So I'm going to go, what is the 20th root of 0 0.1? And that will give me what 1 minus my probability of success is. So I'm going to type in 20. Then I'm going to get my root button. And then I'm going to go 0 0.1. And that's given me that 1 minus my probability of success is 0 0.891. So my probability of success must be 1 minus my probability of failure. So my probability of success, or pi in this case, is 0 0.891. 1087 to four decimal places. Okay, so that's my first one. I've managed to do my first question. The second question, so part B, well, I'm going to start going the same way. I've been told the number of cards, oh, I want to work out the number of cards if I know the probability. So I've still got my 0 0.1, and that equals 1 minus the 0 0.4, which is my probability of a red card, to the power of the number of cards. Now, this is where we have to try and solve this a slightly different way. So I'm going to go to Menu, and I'm going to go to Equation. And I'm going to go to Solver, and I'm going to type in 0 0.1 shift equals bracket 1 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.6, to the power. Now, I can't use the letter N in this, so I'm going to use my variable X. Okay, so I've typed in my equation. Now, the first number it comes up with is probably not going to be the right number. It's just a number along the way. Okay, and then you press solve to find the actual number. So I've managed to use solver on my graphics calculator, and that will get me that x equals 4.5. Now, my problem with that is, of course, x can't equal 4.5. You can't have four and a half cards in the pack. So therefore, x must be equal to 5. And this is where I would go back and I'd go to my calculator bit, and I go 0 0.6 to the power of 4 gives me 12 and a half, nearly 13%. So therefore, when I take that away from 1, then that's not going to be high enough. Whereas 0 0.6 to the power of 5 gives me about 7%, and therefore that, when I take it away from 1, gives me my 90% of 1 or more. Okay? Now, of course... I'm not silly enough to say that you're not going to possibly use Solver to work out the first one. My only word of caution of that is when you're working with even powers, there's sometimes more than one root, and therefore you need to be aware that the other probability might be bigger than one. And you, if you get one answer that's bigger than one, what you need to do is you just need to go back to your original bit and say, I'm going to store the probability of zero in for x in the memory and then it will be able to solve it and give you the right solution so that's how to work out the inverse binomial it's quite a lot in there so you know uh, if i ever work out how to divide up a video and get uh, chapters and all that sort of stuff i might do that but good luck with that and until next time bye for now